Um, the advice that we have received is that trip should leave as early as possible in the morning in order to avoid the great, uh, great heat. Um, because in Ephesus there are hardly any trees. Um, so among those that want to go, please agree um, that you should get up very early out of bed in order to avoid um, an un relatively uncomfortable uh, situation. Thank you. Uh, and please, uh, now the floor is open, uh, address questions to anyone of the panelists. Well, the, the question was uh, 61 million of dead of under communism. Um, Socialism gives um, kind of uh, uh, the sum of all these calamities, for example, 7 to 10 million Ukrainians were starved to death. Then 6 million gulags were sent to Siberia to finish them. Uh, 9 million were killed. And no, 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 like that. So that's his number. So how he calculated that? Uh, he does not explain. However, there is, a, I can refer you to a very good uh, scientific work on that by uh, Jay Rumnell, who is a, a professor of demographics at the University of Hawaii. He wrote a wonderful book, which I advise all my students so you can get the credit for that. Uh, it's called Death by Government. Death by Government. In which Ramel calculated the death by communist governments with 172 million people. He, however, put Nazi government into that communist kind of government. Then um, he, however, what, how he does it, he come, comes with the same number, uh, or more or less the same. He is doing forecasts of population growth. So what would what would be population of Soviet Union if nothing would happen? And then he would detract from that the known casualties of the Second World War. And he came up with, I think, 59 million. Then when I was in Soviet Union, they had under Glasner so called policy on TV, they had a Questions and answer with the chairman of KGB, Mr. Krichkov. And I think they had a plot of question from dissident historian Robin Perry. He said he came up with 42 million people. Is it a true number or not? And Mr. Krichkov, he said, I, I don't know these numbers. What if we will meet in a week? And in a week, the whole country was glued to TV screens to see how many skeletons they have in their cupboard. And Mr. Krishkov, he said, the number is about right, comrades, 42 million. Uh, however, it's preposterous to believe that all of them were killed. And, uh, and then Mr. Medvedev said, but well, they died on premises on KGB. He said, yes, they died on our premises, uh, but they died most of national causes. <laughs> and, and sure, if you don't feed people or you don't <laughs> close them inside, <laughs> so they admitted themselves 42 the KGB. However, there's a plenty of different numbers, starting from the lowest one I saw about 20 million to the highest is 61 million. So the numbers are all, I mean, all it's, I think Stalin was right saying that death of one is tragedy and death of a million is statistic. So that was his response to that in the sense that, that even if it's 42, not 61, or 47 and a half, it's a horrendous number. Well, I have three short questions. I don't know if I missed some parts of maybe at least this is in the talk. But what would you say is the influence of Sargentin in the Russia of today? In which groups in particular would refer to Sargentin's thought in today's Russia? And uh, 
So let's start with Yuri. Right. Uh, well, Solzhenitsyn, he is, uh, I would say, he is a mainstream of Russian society right now. He is the mainstream, he is, uh, he is a kind of leader that I think was done. He's a I don't think this is used. However, I have to ask a question. 
Um, the final word for me was alien nation. I'm sorry, alien powers written by Kim Noah Lowe's to the Uh Subtitle there is the pure theory of ideology. And he says that all such, especially at the beginning, political upheaval is beginning with what he calls, quote, a suffering situation. And to me, that seems a better ideological tool for drawing the conclusions that I think are accurate. What exactly is part of it? Would you agree that that distinction made by the note that the real crux of the issue is not policy capital, but rather identifying the suffering situation in some political yeah, by the way, I, I'm not saying that you know Protestantism and its degenerate it was micro uh, and it, it's the only cause of what I'm describing. I think it's a primary cause. Um, and uh, this is the argument I make in my book about culturalism. But the sequel to that strange of Marxist examines the Italy and other Catholic countries, uh, and I show that there are similar patterns there. You have uh, archbishops. Uh, Uh, 
and not filtering back up to the As if I said, I'm actually one minute already. It would be easy to legalize crimes. It would be 
relatively easy. It would be much harder to dismantle the welfare state. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, are there more reasons for the situation I described? Oh, wait, you just, okay. Are there more reasons for the religion to the condition I described than religion as a contributing factor? I, I think there are. I mean, I think the, the major reason that we have these problems uh, uh, are political. And I think the modern liberal democratic state has destroyed social institutions. Um, I think it's about what uh, Delphine drew now called these intermediate, the, the make waste which sell intermediate institutions. Um, and I think it's a major culprit um, for the kind of social world disintegration that is going on. By the way, I do not speak as an absolute anarchist or a capitalist anarchist. I'm not against the state per se. I mean, the state in the past, I think, sort of positive uh, uh, functions in terms of maintaining order, um, uh, preserving, you might say, enforcing laws uh, that made social development possible.